Hey everyone, welcome to episode 4. In this episode we're going to talk about the update I did to the Z. And we're going to talk about <clears throat> the status of this printer essentially. So, first things first, I have updated the Z like I said I was going to. This no longer uses zip ties or anything like that. Tensioning is way easier. I am strengthened up all the Z mounts. You just sandwich the belt in between this and the linear rail. And then there is an actual M3 bolt there that pushes down on the stepper, which tensions the belt. And you can just lock the stepper in with the four screws at the bottom. There's new feet here. I did have to raise the printer up about 30 millimeters, which is not a bad thing. Now there's room under here for electronics. So you can put a DIN rail, probably like a 12 inch uh, DIN rail would go across here and you could mount your power supply and SSR to that for sure. So that's a huge improvement. I'm really happy with the Z now. And I did print a quick uh, kind of leveling demonstration here for the tramming. So this printer is now available on GitHub. All the STLs are published on GitHub as well as the Clipper config file. So people can actually download that now and they can print their own version of this printer. <clears throat> so this printer is essentially done. Um, one thing I want to talk about is the build volume of this printer. So the build volume on this printer has an X of about 200. The Y is only 150. <clears throat> and that's because you can see here, this tool head is all the way at the back and my nozzle is right here. So I'm losing about 50 millimeters here. So that's why there's only 150. I didn't know this really or plan this out until I built it. Um, I didn't model the Voron stealth burner on here. I kind of just had the actual uh, X carriage on here and I didn't really calculate into how long the frame would have to be. So while this is still a great printer, it's nice and compact. If someone wanted to 200, 200 build area, these side extrusions here could be increased to 350. You could keep a 300 linear rail. There's still a lot of room here to actually slide the linear rail back. And then you would just need to print a new mount here that would be 50 millimeters longer to support the bed. None of, none of the other parts needed to be changed. So. This printer is uh, relatively easily sizable. Uh, you could even make a 300 by 300 version of this printer very easily by just literally increasing the length of these, these um, <clears throat> pads here that hold the bed up and make whatever size extrusions you want. That's really the only change you need to make. So that is pretty nice. Um, like I say, this printer is functionally done. I am going to be moving on to V2 now. I am going to be building a version 2 that has a better frame, full 300 by 300 build area. A lot of the stuff's going to be moved internally inside the frame, so if people do want, they can enclose it. Um, I really want to focus on that with some improvements here and there and uh, kind of get rid of a couple things I didn't really like, uh, being these corners here that I bought from Amazon, um, things like that. But the Z is really great that's going to carry over to v2 i'm really happy with the z i will be using a stealth burner again i will be using a fetus uh, hot end again those are amazing <clears throat> so yeah there's going to be some small changes but in all honesty to change the frame i have to completely get rid of all these extrusions and i'm going to waste a lot of parts in the process so i might as well start v2 and make v2 a 300 by 300 build so uh, like i say it would be pretty easy for someone to make this 200 by 200 or just print it as is and you would have a 200 by 150 by 250 Z. So um, I do have some macros set up in Clipper so that you can tram the printer, you can dock, you can see here the Z actually docks now finally right on the ledge that I made. So the whole bed rests down there. So every time a print finishes this lowers all the way down and this is its resting position so the bed doesn't fall when power gets cut. I also do have a Discord now. So I will be putting the GitHub link and the Discord link in the description below. Feel free to join. I think we're one subscriber away from 300, so 
That's amazing. I really appreciate everyone subscribing and I really hope we can build a cool community around SimpleCube on Discord. So that's it for this uh, update. I'm going to do one more episode on this printer. We'll go over a bill of materials list for this printer, as well as the clipper config, just kind of outlining what I've done. Um, this printer does use sensorless homing, so there are no end stops on this printer. Again, someone could easily modify. You can easily just hot glue a uh, end stop right here. and. There's some nice areas here for an end stop right here or end stop on the other side. So you can easily make uh, this home via end stops instead of sensorless homing if you wanted to. The, the sensorless homing does work. You do have to have the actual um, idler, the Z idlers on the front here like this. The way this printer homes is it actually goes all the way over to the left here homes the X, and then to home the Y, it goes all the way to the front. And it homes, and then it goes and starts printing. So we can change the config file so that this homes all the way at the back instead, which would mean you could move your linear rails to the sides here is where I would actually like them. And then as long as when you are finished printing, print head always move to the very back so that next time when it homes it's going to home x first and then home y you wouldn't want the print to like finish over here and then next time you go to print it's going to try to home and it's going to run into this when it tries to home the x so that would be a small change i would make just to the order of how um which direction it homes it's pretty straightforward in clipper and i'll talk about that in the next episode <clears throat> but that's everything for this episode Thanks everyone for watching. Please comment if you have any questions, suggestions. Like I said, I hope to see a lot of you on Discord. And uh, I have made a channel for this printer specifically. And I will make a new channel for version 2. Thanks again everyone.